Hello, and welcome back to Ag Tech Talk. This is part two of our discussion with Russ Potland, Executive Vice President, Commercial and General Manager USA for La Vie Bio, and Nir Arbel, Chief Product Officer at Evagen, La Vie Bio's parent company. In the first part of our discussion, we talked about how La Vie Bio used MicroBoost AI, Evogene's tech engine, to develop a pair of biological products. In this part two, we're going to discuss how those products are going to be brought to market, what the challenges were to overcome both regulatory and the adoption challenge. Thanks for listening. Welcome back, Russ and Nir. The La Vie Bio, the biology-driven design platform. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about what that is and how that fits into the, the uh, MicroBoost AI? Right, so, so it, it, it combines MicroBoost AI as well. So part of it is obviously MicroBoost AI, uh, but then another part, as, as Russ mentioned, is the Saxonia database as well, which is uh, uh, also a, a wet database. Meaning they have, uh, I don't know the number, maybe Russ, you do, but I think it's tens of thousands of microbes within, within the refrigerators. Uh, that are also computationalized, meaning that when when they screen for uh, gene that they uh, desire and bacteria that they are looking for, they can actually virtually screen whatever is in the refrigerator and then pick those out once they decide that this is you know the correct bacteria to test at that, you know, that point. Uh, and then on top of that, there is entire the entire internal process which also includes the, you know, the experimental the methodology, how to make it through from product requirements all the way down to the, the final product. Everything from uh, the discovery process and development, the, the optimization, the, the fermentation and the formulations of, of the, the products and all the way through. So it, it really encompasses everything that MicroBoost AI provides, everything that's in Taxonia and the entire a uh, very complementary methodology that allows LaVie to kind of uh, feed in and out through either Taxonia or, or MicroBoost AI for its reaching their end goals. If, uh, if I may, I'll add to what Nir said. Um, I'm a simple guy and uh, the easiest way that I can liken uh, in a non-science way to kind of help out with maybe a little clarity Think about when you go to grandma's house and there's a big pail of Lego and it's all mixed up for over the years. There's some from the seventies. There's a spaceship that's from the eighties when Star Wars was big and they're all in a pail and all messed up, right? You, they're all in one big bucket. And that's kind of the bucket that is taxon, right? There's all these different strains, right? And what the platform allows us to do is to take a look and pull each of those strains out and lay it out separately, almost like puzzle pieces you know you set the edge pieces out first and then you you know you can start to build and the cleaner you can see them right then you can do something with them and it doesn't mean that you're always right but the closer you're to right you know the less what we call optimization you have to do in the process to, and you can build things like if you decide you want to build uh, a car or a tractor or a spaceship you know you know you need a certain pieces to do that when you can see them clean but in that bucket all by itself, if you don't pull them out to have a look, it becomes really difficult to build, right? A lot easier once you've sorted them, you understand them, you know what their function is, and then you can build, you know, what you're trying to build, right? It just cleans it up. And that ability to see those little Lego pieces cleanly is exactly what the, the platform and the AI behind it does. And it just puts you on a, a way more, a uh, greater velocity, greater accuracy and it's not one right it's faster but it's also more accurate and you're more likely to have success right your probability of success gets better through each piece of that as you you know as, as it gets cleaner i like that analogy i think uh, uh people all over the the world will understand that one and i was going to make a joke about stepping on it you know in the middle of the night <laughs> you're know, feeling that happens angry. too you know? that that does happen <laughs> so um so let's let's talk a little bit about um, you know again what prompted this this whole conversation is you know I got the press release about uh, the two products that that were developed using these these uh, tools that you've talked about um, you know right now they just have at least as of, of of that press release they just have those you know sort of generic you know not not pro product names can you talk a little about 
um, when the process started for those two specific products, and uh, then also curious what they are, you know, and what they're what the whole the goal is with the to, to how to use those. Right. Yeah. So it takes roughly five years if everything goes well, to from kind of a product concept and getting the product defined to taking it to commercial. Now there's a couple wild cards in there, uh, being regulatory, right, in in country depending where you're at. Some countries, uh, it's not not that difficult to register products, and some it's very difficult. Uh, or you'll run into even the United States, where you know Oregon is very different than California, right? Where it's it's very done at a state level uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, there's also a couple classifications that make uh, large differences. Uh, bio inoculants uh, are a lot less rigid in terms of what they require than bio insecticides or biocontrol products. I'll give you an example. Our bioinoculant is registered, and uh, it's a pair of microbes, and it would be uh, a lot easier to register that than it will be a biocontrol where you're actually, you know, inhibiting life of some sort, right, in terms of a pest or a, a disease. Uh, both these products uh, were developed pretty much from the their very early days of the Levy, so we're going back three, three, four years in both of them. Uh, LAV 311 uh, is a downy mildew product and a uh, or sorry, a powdery mildew product and a botrytis product. That one uh, may be soft launched in 25, uh, more likely 26, depending on regulatory. Uh, we've submitted a dossier uh, for uh, Oregon uh, and Washington, and California will follow shortly after. There's some more information needed for California. Um, and we anticipate that we submitted uh, in December of uh, last year. And we anticipate that by December of this year, well, we should have regulatory approval uh, to be able to commercialize that product. Uh, but I, I, I do uh, strongly uh, advocate for crawl, walk, run. Um, there's been a lot of biological products. They've been around since I started my career almost. And uh, the rules around them vary greatly. And it's so important that we as a company do the work on the back end and have the data and have the proof points, the proof of concept. Uh, because still, you know, 50% of the challenge to, to get somebody to use one is skepticism. You know, it, it hasn't changed in that regard. And part of that is the transgressions of previous people. And some of that's just human nature, something new, something different, right? And that's not a bad thing necessarily, right? So we get it right uh, on the front end. So that that's 311. Uh, 321 is uh, back about a year and a half, two years from that. Um, the other piece of, of 321 is it's a downy mildew product. Uh, not really targeted uh, for large use in the United States, but more likely Europe, uh, where the disease is a, a lot bigger problem, uh, which also creates some challenge. Uh, regulatory in Europe is a lot more challenging, uh, I think is the right word. Uh, you can submit uh, on a regulatory basis as uh, all of Europe, but if you did that, uh, we'd probably never get to market. So we go country by country, um, and it varies greatly. Um, you know, company our size, that's challenging, you know. So in the Europe's of the world, you may see, yes, entertain partners to be able to bring that solution. It's a, a market that's very friendly to our biologicals, but at the same time, not so friendly in terms of being able to commercialize. And I think some of that will sort out over time, you know, with the regulatory as the industry evolves, no different than it did with synthetics and other products. But that, that's kind of the two products. Both are showing efficacy, um, at least at bi with the current biological standards and in a lot of cases closer to synthetic standards, which is really impressive. Yeah, I, uh, you mentioned skepticism. I know this, these you know these tools may help you get a product to market quicker and develop it quicker, but the regulatory process doesn't uh, it, it doesn't help yeah. the regulatory process, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, not a whole bunch. Uh, you're not in control to some degree. Uh, what I will say is that uh, you know the regulatory, uh, that we've embarked on in the United States and now Canada, uh, they're very helpful in in trying to advance. Uh, there's, you know, I would say tailwinds with government supporting, you know, the biological movement. Uh, sometimes they don't always understand, you know, uh, we're, we're evolving at the same time they are. Uh, but uh, they've been very fair in, in how we go about it with APHIS and CFIA in Canada. Um, I think that they're, they're doing a pretty good job for an, an industry that's really in its infancy yet. 
Um, I have, you know, a few, few more questions on my list here, and I think we've kind of talked around them a little bit. So, you know, I'll try and maybe narrow in just a touch. Um, you know, so you've developed these pro, pro, uh, products, you know, it, it's taken three to five years to, you know, get them to this point, these two in particular. Um, uh, well, let's start with this. How many other products are being looked at? I mean, is, is that, I don't know if that's a fair question. You know, are you, you know, is this AI system working constantly to sort of explore different molecules and 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 uh bacteria and different things that are that, that it's always looking at or is it again you you mentioned also that maybe you had to look for a particular solution or you had to have something in mind that you wanted to start with how do, how does that kind of all play out so maybe i'll, I'll answer on the technical aspect of it and russ can refer to the Livy bios pipeline uh so the the, the system itself is uh it, it's, it's a robust system uh However, not you know everything can be run at the same time, so there are you no know, limitations and constraints on, on what apps can or can't be run. And uh, but what what really drives the the computational solution is, is the soundness. So you do need to have in mind you know, what are the requirements you're looking for, what are the questions you want to ask. Uh, I, I understand that we all touch this you know very superficially. You know, having a gene catalog, but there's so many other layers. Uh, kind of upon that, uh, that relate as well to the you know the various uh, possible questions that you know the scientists can ask you know uh, in terms of you know what you know what what are the genes what do they look like what are what, what is their three D structure what are similar three D structures are they involved in any known pathways and so on and so on but all these questions that at the end of the day they relate. To the yeah uh, to the the requirements of the questions that the scientists want answers uh, and that that what the system uh, provides so it it doesn't need to be prompted uh, towards a pipeline and I'll, I'll leave it to Russ maybe to discuss more about Lavie's pipeline yeah um, I think it's an important distinction that Nir brought up that it's really driven by the need of called the farmer the grower or the industry for that matter or the consumer right. Um, I, I've been in ag now 30 years, and I, I don't know that I've seen the consumer have as big an effect as they have on an industry as they are today. Uh, you know, we, we have farmers that are making decisions based on end use. Um, you know, and, and we talk about products in the pipeline, and to me, it, it's even deeper than that. Um, we, we, we sell our product to distribution who sells it to a grower. But in that chain, we have somebody that's buying the grain, somebody that's processing the grain, someone that's milling the grain, and then ultimately a food company. And uh, on our first product, which is a bioinoculant, we've actually integrated all the way along the path. And, and there is a contract in place for a farmer that he can sign up for where he will get beta premium to use an advanced sustainability program. Um, it's in its infancy. Uh, you know, we're starting. We've got, uh, you know, one mill on board today. And likely uh, another one shortly, but it 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 reinforces the value uh, of of the biological kind of kind of chain, and and I see that in a bunch of different products, whether it be the people that are managing vineyards, uh, you know, and how they're thinking about it. It's always about who who are we selling it to and what do they want. Uh, in our product line, we have a bioinoculant today that's in the marketplace in uh, in the U.S., Montana, North Dakota, and Minnesota. Um, so that's in place that will be in our second year of, of commercial sales this year and with a grain contract to support it and maybe two. Um, the next product that will hit the marketplace will be 311. Uh, that'll be 25, probably soft launch 26, somewhere in there, depending on regulatory. Um, the, it gets a little foggier when we get out to 321 just because Europe's involved and uh, it probably involves a, a dance partner for someone like Levy, you know, with some support of those functions of regulatory and in country and you know as a small company that that's challenging alone we also run uh, some programs with corteva i won't get into the specifics of them but you know around uh, more corn and beans focused products and uh, we also have a partner in icl that we've got a couple separate projects on uh, as well and last but not least we are also working on nitrogen fixation uh, which is pretty exciting um, it you know, from a carbon perspective, is probably the home run and uh, the, the, the holy grail of, of biologicals. Uh, you know, that's the one that everybody's striving for. Uh, but we've also got these other strengths, you know, in, in other areas that we don't uh, 
we don't just abandon just because infixation is where everybody is chasing. You know, we want to do what we do well and where we see opportunity. And uh, given what we know, those are the areas that uh, I, I guess we spend time in. Make sure you give me a call when you're ready with that product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? A lot of big claims up there on that one, right? In the industry. Sure. So you said the uh, you have the one product. Is that the uh, Thrivus? Is yes. The... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a seed treatment bioinoculant. Um, goes on at 10 grams like a, a normal synthetic seed treatment. Coexists with synthetic treatment and uh, gaining momentum. It's been good. Yeah, I, I was looking at your website, and you know, you have this, uh, you know, the uh, the product pipeline, and you know, that's the one obviously that's that's listed in the commercialization uh, column. But uh, you know, you have uh, you know others that are in pre development, uh, pre commercialization, mildew. You know, so uh, it's interesting. I think that you you know say you know here's where we are with the with these different products. If you were developing, you know, three eleven, three twenty one, without these tools that we've been talking about. You know, would it have taken three to five years? Would it have taken seven to ten years? Would you, you know, still be, you know, where would you be if you didn't think you had these tools? Doing it more, I guess, I don't know what the traditional way is, but, uh, you know, differently. I Probably the easiest way is to compare it to kind of a synthetic scenario, right, to give it a bit of context. Um, when I left, uh, the last company I was with in the synthetic world, uh, we were 10 to 13 years, depending on product, uh, to, from discovery to launch. And that's provided everything went well. Uh, that also gets accompanied with about $150 million price tag to, to bring something to market. Um, you know, we talk here, if all goes well, five years. Um, you know, probably the greater advantage is in the active that's available. Call it active ingredient in synthetics or microbe, you know, where we are. As we run out of options synthetically, uh, we have to have success, you know, and that has really given life to some of the biological industry as well. It's not just, you know, sustainable, it's not just healthier, it's <laughs> we don't have options in spots. And in some cases, uh, administrations are helping that process out, right? Outlawing existing actives and, you know, and there needs to be a sensibility around that velocity as we move to biologicals, you know, do. Do I believe one day we could be completely biological? Yeah, I do. Uh, do I believe that that's going to be 2030? Probably not. You know, I, I think there needs to be tempered. There are synthetics that we need in the in the world today yet, you know, or people are going to starve if we start, uh, you know, just running away from them, you know. Uh, but I think if we, there's a sensibility uh, of advancing these products that are in the pipeline, you know, if, if it's a five-year window, you know, in 15 years, that's three generations, right? And if we follow kind of what synthetics did over three generations, you know, and the growth can be that great and probably greater given the AI, the big data and all Nears world, um, I think you can expect that, that we get there and that products become a lot, you know, even more rapid in development. And I, I think for, for the VSH platform company, you relate to that, you know, how how does you know the five years compare? So it's very hard to to compare apples to apples here, right? Because you wouldn't you know start up a LV with a computational platform and what without and see you know who does better. But I think uh, if if you know you look at you know the the, the brightest uh, process, right? They started out with around six hundred bacteria computational that they only tested for are they positive or negative for botrytis just to build that initial aspect. Uh, and selected 150, you know, out of their database, tested out that they have all the other functionalities. So actually only truly tested 30 in, in, in the greenhouse, out of which five were selected for field trials and, and two ended up being the product, right? So having that sort of statistics, not uh, yes, can happen to a company without a computational uh, platform. But if you have a very uh, uh, a diverse pipeline, there's no way that you would be as lucky to get, you know, th these sort of statistics again and again and again. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that that the world of biologicals today wouldn't exist without it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, there's just too much there. Uh, the other piece is, is a lot of positive things are coming out of collaborations. Um, it, I, I would say if you look at biologicals versus the synthetic world, 
uh, the ability to have success and having a willingness to collaborate is very different than what synthetic stuff, you know, I don't know if it was arrogance or it was just the nature of the chemistry previously, but you know, it's almost our responsibility to collaborate with others to drive this forward. If you, if you really believe in, you know, the health of our soil, the sustainability, you know, and healthier food, uh, we, we can't ignore others that have success in areas. And probably the best thing could happen is four or five companies had success, you know, that, that have something that makes commercial impact and kind of rewrites the rule book a little bit, you know? Um, I, I think we really covered all my my issues, my questions. Um, you know, is there something that uh, we haven't addressed that people should know about? You know, from from our standpoint, um, it's an adoption market largely. So we have areas where there are biologicals used more of the fruit and veg market or the higher end is a little bit of a higher penetration. It, it seems like if a consumer pops a grape in his mouth, that's a little more direct than a loaf of bread right, on a wheat crop. And what, what I would say is it, it does take time to adopt um, and, and to get growers to use things and to advance those things. And you can't, you can't work around that. Uh, you need to do the work and to, to lay in the trench with the farmers uh, to, to be able to, to kind of walk them through that experience. Uh, you know, in our bioinoculant, we're talking about a 6% advantage. If you're not looking close, you're not gonna see it, right? You know, you can measure it with yield at the end, but there are so many other pieces to walking a person through it that that investment at the grower level and then, you know, even with uh, there are certain procurement companies that get it, right? You've seen companies uh, that put stakes in the ground that said by 2030, you know, we're going to be 25% further down sustainability path like Canada or, you know, some that say we want fully sustainable production by 2030. Now, whether they get there or not doesn't matter. What matters is, is that they're on the road to get there. Right. And for me, um, it's a bit of a journey. It's not perfect. Uh, it's a living organism. We can never forget that. And from year to year, that changes. But the consistency of when I started my career with early biologicals to now is night and day. We are definitely on a, on a wave of technology change and, and product change with it. So, you know, I would encourage people to, to, to take a look at them and, and, and try to make them work. I think, uh, I've used this line many, many times. Uh, I wish I could remember who told it to me and you know give them credit. I can't, but he said something to the effect that every farmer he's ever met must be from Missouri. Um, <laughs> yeah, Russ, you're laughing because you know Missouri is known as the show me state. Yeah, you know it's, it's you know farmers are are traditionally like, all right, I hear what you're saying, but you know what, you got to prove it to me. You got to prove not only is it a good product, but you know it, it's going to make me money. You know it's got it's not going to cost me money and um, you know, so they, they, they want proof behind this. And, and I think that's another thing, you know, the science behind some of these products that are now coming out is, is much more substantial and, uh, you know, it's repl re replicable and, you know, it's, it's independent and, you know, it's, it's not like it used to be, you know, 10, 15 years ago, where it was like, yeah, we got this product, just go ahead and try it. You know, it's great. And, and, you know, it doesn't work because it's, you know, you didn't have the science behind it. It's funny. You mentioned the Missouri thing. Uh, two weeks into the role with Levy, I was standing at a farmer's field and we're looking at a side-by-side -side trial. And he, he got to know me a little bit and he called me Rusty. Yeah, I knew right away that he's leaning in a little bit. And he said to me, you know, I, I, I care about this sustainability thing. And he said, so does every other damn farmer on the planet, right after our financial sustainability. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it hit me like a two-by-four. It shouldn't have. But, but, but it really did that, you know, you have to base... If you want success with the biologicals, you just can't lean on sustainability only. You, you have to have the other benefits to the farmer and to the value chain. And if that, in the absence of that, they don't stand alone. You know, regulation can't force them. That's not the way it's going to work. For sure, for sure. Um, uh, if, if somebody wants to learn more about, you know, Levy, um, you know, Levy Bio, um, where do they go? What do they do? Sure. Check us out at levybio.com. Uh, or evagen.com would be, you know, our parent company. Uh, also, you know, other websites, corteva.com and ICL as well. Uh, they're partners of ours, so we'll, we'll give them a shameless plug. Um, you know, we, we, we can't do this journey alone. I stress that, and that's why we have the selective partners we do. Um, you know, and I, I'd leave the group with that, you know, we're, we're open to talking with other biological companies too because we don't do everything perfect. 
and neither do they. And sometimes the collaboration, you know, that's that's where we could really have magic. Join us next time for another installment of Ag Tech Talk, where we'll talk with another expert improving the ag industry through technology.